All right, happy Tuesday, Tuesday Tactic, and title today is Sweetie, Are You Going to Drink Yourself to the Grave Today? And you see this, I see this, and I do this, and I'm sure you do it too, and it's very challenging to get around this. And what I'm talking about is sugar. Sugar is equivalent to cancer. If you look at the literature, you look at the data presented by physicians, functional medicine people, it's just really quite evident that sugar fuels cancer. And it's disguised in many forms. It's really hard to avoid. The manufacturers are very creative in how they package and label and market things. They use fancy terms and they alter the, the words. They use scientific words that we don't understand. And it's really hard unless you, you type it in and you Google search it. Almost everything that we eat has some sugar added to it if it's in a package. Obviously, if it's off a tree or you're peeling it naturally, it's got natural sugars, which is a much different issue. But so what's the problem you're asking? You know, what's the, what's the harm in a little sugar? We know historically that our sugar intake is really quadrupled. If you go back to the 1800s and even to the early 1900s, we ate about 70 pounds of sugar a year. Just think about that when you go to the grocery store. What does a, a pound of sugar actually look like? Now imagine now in today in modern society, the average Westerner eats about 152 pounds of sugar. That's really the equivalent of, uh, uh, well, my ninth grader is, is almost that much. And so that is a truckload of sugar. And a lot of it that we eat is actually derived from corn. It's high fructose corn syrup. That's highly inflammatory to the body, and it's potentially full of toxins. I shared on uh, Periscope a few weeks ago about a particular region in the U.S. that is just known for massive levels of obesity. And part of the issue is that there's a, uh, I believe it's an herbicide used to help with the corn growing and that's incorporated into the corn and it's incorporated into our bodies when we consume these products and it gets into our fat. And that's why when we start to lose weight, the toxin comes out into higher concentrations and we feel bad when we lose weight. It's sort of a, a negative reinforcer when we're trying to live and make healthier choices. But jumping ahead to what we're actually talking about today, the sugar actually fuels a variety of detrimental health problems. And so it's really a mind shift that has to occur to get away from this. And a lot of times people will try and substitute uh, a diet soda and say, well, you know, this, this Diet Coke has got to be better than a Mountain Dew. There's, you know, look, there's there's no sugar in here. It says sugar is zero. It's got to be good. And the problem with that is actually twofold. Uh, first is that the alteration of the perception of sweetness is just totally destroyed. People who drink a lot of diet, eat a lot of diet foods, they really lose their sensitivity to sweetness. And so when they actually eat something that is inherently sweet, a piece of fruit or something else that has some natural sweetness to it, it's really hard for them to perceive the the true sweetness of it. And the result is that they eat more. And that obviously fuels the whole uh, weight issue as well. The other issue is a chemical called methylgloxol. And whoop de doo you say, it's just another chemical in our food chain that we eat. It's just one more thing to be aware of. But the issue is that it's 100 times more potent than sugar and it messes up your cholesterol. We all think of LDL cholesterol as bad, but it's really not until that that cholesterol is modified that it does damage to our blood vessels and boosts our risk of, uh, increases our risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. All bad things, right? So this methylgloxol actually changes the cholesterol and turns it into the damaging form. And so drinking a diet soda, you think you're doing yourself some good, but in essence, you're messing up your cholesterol, which seems counterintuitive when you think about drinking a diet soda. You don't really think anything about fat or cholesterol or any of those type of things in the body or heart disease or stroke for that matter. But I just wanted to point that out. So the bottom line is to think before you drink. Just take a moment and, and look around where you're sitting right now. What are you drinking? What are you eating? Or what are you about to put in your mouth? And what's in it? Look at the label. Notice how it's got carbohydrates, protein, and it gives you a daily recommended amount. That's the amount that our our government has deemed to be, quote, safe or appropriate for us. But then look at sugar. What does sugar say? Nothing. And the reasons are really surprising. It's political. It's all politically motivated back in the, um, I I think the 60s, there was a a lobbying act and a, a bill and everything kind of passed to help protect the farmers and the corn growers. And so I won't get into all that. I covered that in a previous uh, uh, post in a podcast. But there is no recommendation for sugar. The reason being is that there is no recommended daily amount of sugar intake. It's not an essential ingredient in our diet. So that should tell you something. So look around, see what you're about to eat, see what you're about to drink. Think about what that's going to do to your body, your longevity, your chance for a healthy future. That's it. That's today's Tuesday Tactic. We'll talk to you soon.
Oh, and if you like this, please share it. Jump over on iTunes, leave a review. And you can find more information on the blog at Mitchell MD. And there's a ton of free resources there. And uh, thanks so much. Take care.